If only the future hadn't arrived 10 years ago. (laughs) (laughs) Welcome to Second Opinion, the reviews show here on The Nexus. I am your host, Ian R. Buck, and today I will be joined by Ryan Rampersad so I can share my experiences with the Chromecast audio. Find the show notes for this episode at thenexus.tv slash SO37. All right, so this device actually warrants a little bit of like introduction since a lot of people might not be familiar with what it is although it does have the advantage that this device has been out for a really long time (laughs) i went back and watched my like setup video that i made when i first got it uh and that was over two years ago and not only was it over two years ago but it was long enough ago that i was using the nexus 5. that is an ancient device yeah yeah so that was that was prior to my Nexus 5X, which was prior to my Pixel 2. So that was like two two full phones ago. So the Chromecast Audio, what is this thing? It is this little device that doesn't do anything by itself. You have to plug it into uh, some speakers in order to get any functionality out of it. Uh, So to facilitate that, it has uh, like a headphone jack on it, right? Um, And it, it supports one of three outputs, either a headphone jack, uh, RCA, or optical out- input. Amazing. Yeah. Uh, I only know what one of those means, so. <laughs> Good. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally an audio engineer, for so, sure. So, headphone jack is like uh, 3.5 millimeter. Yep, everybody knows what that is. RCA would be left and right channels separated. Oh, is that the... the, the... One cable, the two things. I was going to say uh, white, red, and yellow. I don't yellow. know what the colors are. It, if, but like, those are the ones that you would plug into an ancient television, right? Right. Okay, and and then an RCA cable would be you know, the one without the video component. Sure, sure. Um, yep, yep, yep. And then an optical would be the uh, light-based optical cable, uh, sometimes no, go, uh, known as by like a Taos link or something, uh, okay. or uh, SPIDF, okay. something like that. I'm not sure I've actually ever seen one of those. Now you can you you often see the um, optical version on some higher end audio equipment or like sound bars. Mm-hmm. Uh, TVs have them sometimes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, seems rather interesting that this thing supports that optical input. You know, for high end audio equipment, since this is such a cheap device, right? Eh. The I mean, it's so cheap. Their implementation is pretty clever. I'll tell you that. Who the the Chromecasts? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, because it's all one port. Right, yeah. It's super clever. And I don't understand exactly how that works, but Well, you there's know. a little light in it and there's mm-hmm. Yeah, that's some true. I have noticed bands. that little red light that like shining in there. Yep, that's um, what that's what the laser's doing. Okay. See, my thought when I saw that was like, "Oh, it's so that you know like so that you can plug in a headphone jack in the dark." Yeah, that's what it's for, Ian. <laughs> Man, I am so clueless. You're bright. But yeah, no, this thing, this Chromecast Audio is so inexpensive that it actually hasn't dropped in price at all since it launched. How much years is it ago. now? 35 bucks. Wow, look yep. at that. Yep. It's uh, also like not as popular as the video versions. Right. Which is probably not helping its price drop. Mm, mm-hmm. Like I've seen the regular one, the video version, on sale. Oh, okay. I don't know if I've ever seen intentionally the audio version on sale. Mm, mm-hmm. I have, to be honest, I haven't been looking though either. So, yeah. you know. And once you have plugged in this uh, Chromecast audio into a pair of speakers, uh, what you do is you play audio media from some device onto those speakers using the Chromecast audio. Right. So, to be clear, mm-hmm. it doesn't play anything by itself. You need speakers. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right. And also, it, it can't access any media by itself unless you have another device telling it what to access, right? So so different apps, primarily you're going to be using your phone to interface with this thing, right? right? You can use a computer. But don't. But yeah, like for the most part, you're not going to be doing that. So on your computer, or on, your, on your phone, right? You'll pull up whatever app you want to play stuff from. So this is probably going to be like a music playing app, uh, or a podcast playing app of some sort, right? Mm-hmm. And if you are on the same Wi-Fi network as a Chromecast audio, then what you'll see is a little cast button that looks like kind of a rectangle with like those those kind of radio waves uh, in the corner. Kind of looks like an RSS feed uh, icon mm-hmm. overlaid on a rectangle. And when you tap on that, then you can uh, choose to cast the the content that you're playing 
to that uh, Chromecast audio device, right? Mm-hmm. And then whatever you were playing on your phone starts playing through those speakers that are plugged into the Chromecast audio. And it is important to note that the the way that this is working is it's not taking like the audio stream from your phone and playing it over those speakers. What it's doing is your phone is basically telling it, this is where you can find this audio file from the internet, right? So if you were to play this particular podcast episode, it would give the Chromecast audio the location on the Amazon S3 servers, right? Mm -hmm. Where it can find the MP3 file for this episode and it would start playing it at whatever timestamp the phone tells it to, right? Right. And then, and then anytime that you like, you know, skip ahead 30 seconds or like, you know, scrub around and on the the you know time bar um it would just you know forward that command on to the chromecast audio and the chromecast audio would obey that command right essentially so it it turns your phone into like a remote control right Mm -hmm. so that's that's what the device is now how how well does it do that how useful is this thing I have found it to be very, very useful. Uh, I bought one in order to plug it into uh, some speakers for our kitchen, right? And uh, because, like, a lot of times when I'm, like, making food in the kitchen, I want to be, like, listening to a podcast or some music or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. And so what I did was uh, I plugged in this Chromecast audio into a headphone splitter, actually. And then I plugged in one pair of uh, bookshelf speakers on one side of the room and a couple of like desktop speakers on the other side of the room and these are these are speakers are all up above you know they're like on the cabinets in in our uh, in our kitchen um and so i have this nice like surround sound setup uh all just you know from this one 35 dollar tiny little device and so yeah like like i play i play stuff to it all the time um and especially since like I have uh, several Google Homes in my in my house as well. You know, they they have set up a system where you can uh, create groups of speakers. Um, you know, so I have like the downstairs speakers for the the kitchen and the Google Home that's in the living room, right? I have a group for like all of the speakers. So if I want to if I want to play stuff upstairs and downstairs at the same time, you know, like they all synchronize together. That's really nifty. I love that. Yeah. So like I get I get a lot of use out of this thing. I think it's amazing. Like almost, I think more use than I get out of the Chromecast that is plugged into my television. Mm-hmm. Yeah. By the way, if you want to listen to us review the uh, Google Home Mini that came out earlier this fall, go and check out the last episode of Second Opinion. Uh, and if you want to hear us reviewing the Chromecast that you plug into your television, go to the next episode of Second Opinion because we're kind of doing all of these all all in a row. It was planned. Yeah. Whoa. I do think that the Chromecast audio has a very, like, clever visual design. Um, And this isn't something that really matters to the device itself, right? Because you're never going to be looking at it. Ideally, it's, like, out of of sight behind, like, the speakers that it's actually powering. Um, But it's, like, this little black round uh, device that has a bunch of grooves like a record, like a vinyl record. Huh. Because it's, like... Music. Music. Huh, Audio weird. stuff. Yeah. Hmm. Um, and then also, like, it, it comes with this tiny little uh, three and a half millimeter male to male cord, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's a really, really short cord. And so, what they did for like all of their marketing materials is they have that cord kind of arranged in a in a half circle above yeah. the Chromecast audio. And so, it looks like a pair of headphones that it's, uh, that it's wearing, mm-hmm. which is kind of cute. Yep, yep. I see it now. <laughs> It does charge via micro USB and it's such like a, a basic implementation of that that it literally has like a charging brick that you plug into the wall, right? And that has a USB type A mm-hmm. port on it and then, you know, A to that, that's all you could expect. Yeah. Um yeah, especially from a thirty five dollar device. And that's mostly okay, except for the fact that like I've had house guests come over and they find that brick and they're like oh i need to charge my phone and then they unplug the chromecast audio so that that seems unbelievable to me i don't like i don't understand how this happens you have to understand that these house guests are teenagers and they have no self-control and they won't ask for help it's so strange to me that 
I, I guess I wasn't a teenager, but it's so weird to me that that happens f- with people. But also, how is it that like these things are out and about in such a way that they can even know? Yeah, well, the Chromecast audio, the, the outlet that it's plugged into mm-hmm. is like in a place where I can't hide it. It's mm. right next to the counter okay. uh, in the kitchen. So they can all see it. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. And then the uh, the Chromecast that's plugged into so my television is like... what you need to do is, is like... you need to install some like conduit that guards the cable so okay. they can't possibly <laughs> take it out without unscrewing it. Uh, actually, you know what? I just realized that I'm not sure where the speakers are plugged in because I don't think that there's anything plugged in next to the Chromecast audio. Hmm. Hmm. So yeah, that's that's like the only drawback to having it uh, use like a, a regular micro USB setup. Um, speaking of setup, it was like very very easy to set this thing up, especially if you have an Android device in particular, right? Uh, so you just like connect to it. Um, you you have to go and like install the uh, the Google Home app, of course, in order to uh, in order to interface with the Google or the Chromecast audio, but once you go into the uh, into the Google Home app, you know you tell it like I've got this new device. I want to set it up. It uh, connects to it. Um, you just tell it like what kind of initial settings you want. You know whether you want to enable guest mode or not. Whether you want to send usage statistics back to Google, you know or not. And then you just give it your your Wi-Fi credentials from the phone, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, and it pushes all of that to the Chromecast audio, and it sets itself up. Boom. Pretty easy. Pretty easy. Yep. The only the only way I can imagine that being easier would be if you could automatically push like the the Wi Fi settings for the current Wi Fi network that you're connected to on the phone. Right. To the Chromecast audio. Like that'd be perfect. Yeah. And that's like that's a really tiny, you know, step. Google loves to talk about the Chromecast audio experience and compare that to the experience of using like Bluetooth speakers, right? Mm -hmm. To try to, you know, fill a whole room, especially like in a party scenario is what they're talking about, right? Mm -hmm. And I got to say that like, yeah, the Chromecast audio definitely has the edge over Bluetooth speakers in in a lot of ways. So for one thing, pairing is not a thing that you really have to do with the uh, Chromecast audio. And that's a, a big pain point for for bluetooth a lot of times is you know if this isn't the phone that is usually connected to these speakers you're gonna have a you know a a half a minute at least of trying to connect to it uh, via bluetooth whereas with the chromecast audio the authentication is via the wi-fi network so as long as your device your phone is on the same wi-fi network as the chromecast it's going to be visible. It's going to be able to interact with it, right? Right. Um, and like I like I briefly mentioned earlier, there is kind of a guest mode that you can enable. And I haven't really used that because usually when people are over at my house, they're on my Wi-Fi anyway. Yeah. I feel like the guest mode thing, like Google's tried to tout this as a feature. Mm-hmm. It's still sort of weird. Yeah. And I'm not entirely clear on the technicals of how it works. I think it might use like this Google's one, nearby future. I thought it used... Uh, at one time, I thought it used a code only visible on the screen in order to... Like... That would be, I think, for, yeah, the, the one that pl- you plug into a television. Right. And so how would it do that on the... I'm not sure. It uses some combination of sensors to, like... To know for sure. In order to know which things are in the same room. So I think mm. I think it might be using... Like I know that Android nearby uses some features where it like well, it's like Wi-Fi play triangulation sub, and and also it plays like subsonic yeah. sounds. That sounds really fishy. And yeah, <laughs> and then like the uh, the phones pick that up and you know are aware of it or something. I don't know. The other the other way that uh, Chromecast audio is better than Bluetooth is you're never really in danger of accidentally like walking out of range right. of the Bluetooth speakers and and you're never you're definitely never in in danger of like turning your body and like having you know this this mass yeah. of Distort, human who's distorting with the liquid. audio stream yep yep and that's a real problem with Bluetooth yeah like oh, it happens yeah. all the time mm-hmm. and it actually it it does so well. Uh, with this like connectivity th- thing that a lot of times I will like entirely walk, aw- not a lot of times, but like I have done this in the past where I entirely walk away from the house and like am disconnected from the Wi Fi, you yeah. know, and like it continues to play in my absence, right? Because it's, it's not, not playing with your phone, exactly. Phone's yeah. just a remote, yep, yep. And 
And actually, that does get into like the issue of occasionally when you are still within the Wi-Fi range, right? It will like your phone will kind of forget that it's Chromecasting, Mm -hmm. and but then it'll like bring it back, you know, kind of thing. Worst case scenario, you might have to like go back into the the app that you were playing, uh, just click the Chromecast button, yep, and reconnect, and and you know, ninety five percent of the time, it it uh, you know figures out, you know, oh. You've been playing in my absence. Let me just update like what I'm showing on my screen to match what you know is actually being played, kind of thing. That's not too bad. So yeah, music and podcasts are not going to be interrupted by notifications. Uh, so I think this is this is a pretty big one because mm-hmm. like if you are playing via Bluetooth, right, it's literally just mirroring any sounds that would normally be coming through the speakers on your phone. Whereas like with Chromecast, it understands that the the noises that should be coming from your phone are different than the noises that should be coming through the speakers. And it's amazing. Yeah. 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 So you'll still be getting all of your notifications through your phone, and then, like, all the other people who are in the room don't need to be bothered by the fact that, like, oh, I just heard, you know, the Hangouts notification sound through the speakers yeah. that, you know, are playing in the kitchen. It's, it's a great feature. Um, and I and I noticed that a lot um, when I uh, use Bluetooth in the car. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, just, yeah. I get no noises and suddenly my podcast goes away for 10 seconds. <laughs> like, what go, what's going on here? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they try to mitigate that with like kind of car modes or whatever that'll like put you into do not disturb Doesn't while work. you're plugged into the Bluetooth. Did I just say plugged into the Bluetooth? You sure wow. did. <laughs> I understand how Bluetooth works. You bet. Don't worry. <laughs> now some apps, and these are like the really cool ones that are, are deep into the Chromecast, uh, infrastructure right some apps will allow you to have multiple people connecting at once to the same chromecast device and uh, as long as they're using like the same app right and then and then allow them to manipulate a queue uh simultaneously um so like i think youtube does this on the video side i believe that google play music does this for audio Mm -hmm. i haven't really encountered you know like obviously pocket casts wouldn't do this for podcasts that would be That'd be really, really wild. But yeah, like... I mean, like, what does this button do? Oh, that that will cast. Yeah. But, like, if I started casting as well from my phone, mm-hmm. I don't think we would have a shared queue. Oh, I sure. think mine yeah. would just take it over. Yeah, you're right. I, I doubt it. Yeah. Um, but, like I said, for some apps, like, first party, you know, Google, uh, Google Play Music, it so allows... Like four apps. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm. So What a feature. If, if, you, you, if you happen to use those, you'll be pleasantly surprised by that feature, you know? But again, like it requires everybody in the room to be using the same service. And that's like the only thing that I can think of that you can reasonably expect that from is YouTube, right? Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. And that's actually the other thing is one of, one of the cons of the Chromecast audio is that like most video um, apps don't support Chromecast audio at all, right? Mm-hmm. And in particular, like usually that's not a big deal because I'm not trying to cast Netflix to the speakers. That'd be weird. Yeah. Um, but for YouTube, it is an issue because YouTube has a lot of like audio only content. For example, all of these Nexus TV podcasts. Exactly. Yeah. You can listen to this on YouTube, but you can't listen to it on a Chromecast audio via YouTube unless you're using the YouTube music app. But I don't think that we're listed on the YouTube music app. See how weird that is? It's very weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I, I need to learn more about how that YouTube slash YouTube music dichotomy works. Because... So does Google, incidentally. <laughs> yeah, but I'll, I'll, I won't learn all of that until we go and do like a full review of a bunch of different music streaming services. So now speaking of, uh, of, of like different services, if you are trying to like, stream something from a service that doesn't support google cast then you are going to be kind of out of luck right um unless there's there's a couple of cases where where you could still cast to the chromecast audio if you are on an android device um you should have like a system-wide cast button that will allow you to mirror all of the sounds that's coming through your phone right so at that point it basically becomes like a bluetooth connection that's technically going over the wi-fi right right network and also if you are on a computer and you're in the chrome browser you should be able to cast all of the audio that's coming through a particular tab Mm -hmm. up to uh, a chromecast audio so 
um, and maybe you'll talk about this. What are the mm-hmm. capabilities for playing something that isn't already on the internet? In that case, you would de- you would have to be mirroring mm-hmm. the audio from your device. Yeah. So to- there's no there's no like go to this app and hit some kind of Chromecast button and just stream this thing. I don't think so. That's too bad. Yeah. If only the future hadn't arrived ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> and this is actually it's it's a very very good thing for Google. I don't know if they were planning this at the time. Oh, but they were planning. It's it. a very good thing for them that with Google Play Music, right, they took the approach of having it be like a cloud-based platform mm-hmm. where even even for all of the, the songs that you aren't buying from Google but you're putting them into your library, right, that library is still stored and managed on Google servers, right? So all of the songs that I have, like, I don't... I'm not relying on the local mp3 copy that's on my computer i'm relying on the copy that's stored on google's servers Mm -hmm. right so those are all castable just fine no problem yeah Mm -hmm. um and i and i i want to say that like the support for the chromecast audio is a lot more universal than like the support for Chromecast video, right? Mm-hmm. Um, for sure. The only the only major like music playing service, streaming service that I can think of that doesn't do Chromecast is Apple Music, and that's because it's Apple, you know. And of course, they're not going to like support their competitors' streaming right. device. Mm-hmm. On the on the video side, however, like it's very very fragmented, you know. Like nobody I'll, wants to cooperate at all. Exactly. Um, there's most of the services that don't have a hardware division in their company are just fine with like supporting all of these different streaming, you know, devices that are out there, but you do have more companies that are trying to do video stuff like Amazon, right? Who like who absolutely refuse to cooperate with Google kind of thing. So like I feel like it's Google also chose this way. So mm-hmm. Google could have made it so that any any apps audio that enters Android mm-hmm. could just have been streamable. Right. And, it, and, and it would have been mirrored, but it wouldn't have to be called that. They could have just made it, oh, you're listening to this? Play it on your speakers. Mm-hmm. They could have chosen to do that. They didn't choose that. Right. I mean, I guess that would feel a little bit more heavy-handed, right? You I know? like heavy-handed. <laughs> then you should go and, you know, buy, I... buy Apple devices. Oh. So, I guess. Hold on while I pet my MacBook Pro. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. But that is that is the other thing that I like about the Chromecast like approach more is that it is it is cross platform mm-hmm. technically, right? You know, it's up to each app developer on whether or not they want to support this or not. Whereas, you know, if we if we have like a uh, an AirPlay situation, right? The only devices that can can airplay our apple ones right mm-hmm. um and like i guess there was like one htc phone at one point that like had airplay built in i'm still not that sounds fake i'm still not sure about how that happened but you know it happened i think there have been a few newer features that they have introduced over the years that's a weird thing to be able to say over the years <laughs> how often does a google product <laughs> last that long <laughs> Uh, um, but they have like some new features such as variable speed playback, which they introduced, I believe it was just this last fall, actually. And those new features actually have to be implemented kind of on an app by app basis, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so for, for the longest time, whenever I was like, I, I've been listening to podcasts at increased speed for, you know, quite a few years, right? But then whenever I wanted to cast them to my Chromecast, I would have to deal with the fact that it could only play them at one X speed. Right. right. And there's nothing that like pocket cast could do, mm-hmm. um, uh, you know, to, to remedy that unless I wanted to mirror the audio from my phone. Right. But now they, they do support variable speed playback. And if pocket casts hadn't gone and updated their app to implement that new feature in the Chromecast in the, in the cast, you know, like yeah. the way that they're interacting with it, then I wouldn't be able, still wouldn't be able to do it. So it's it's kind of a it's kind of a goofy way, but it also encourages people to use apps that actually get updated on a regular basis. Mm-hmm. So that's nice. Yeah. As I mentioned earlier, 
the Chromecast audios uh, can be like linked together to create like multi-room kind of synchronizing Which groups. Pretty cool. Yeah, and and I'm really really glad that they also added the Google Homes to that kind of list of things. Makes perfect sense. Because um, I only have one Chromecast audio, and I have several Google Homes in my house. Mm-hmm. The other thing that they did that's really nice that is like kind of integrating nicely with the Google Home is that I can like tell a Google Home. If I ask you to play some audio, do it by default through this pair of speakers, right? Mm-hmm. That is hooked up to a Chromecast audio, right? And and so like by by those means, they kind of are create they're they're almost making like the Google Home Max irrelevant before it even comes out because like in my kitchen, I already have like, you know, a nice uh set of of um big old boxy um Real speakers. Yeah, speakers. Uh, what, are, what are those called? Bookshelf uh, speaker. bookshelf speakers, yeah. Um, hooked up to a Chromecast Audio. That costs $35, right? The bookshelf speakers cost like, you know, 40 bucks or something like that. Sure. Um, a, not 400 huh? No, not 400 hmm. Um, A Chromecast or a Google Home Mini costs like, you know, 50 bucks, except that I got mine for free, right? Not 400 huh? Yeah, no. And hmm. so, so like, the total cost of that is is probably around $100, right? Well, that Versus is simply unheard of. Yeah, exactly. So... So yeah, it's uh yeah the Chromecast audio gr- great great piece of the of the puzzle as it were you know to creating like this home that can play anything any type of media uh, at any time that you want to and uh, and I really like the fact that like I can bring people into my house who have never ever used a Chromecast before mm-hmm. and chances are they'll be able to play their music over my speakers, right? I just, you know, get them onto my guest Wi-Fi network. Yeah, that's it. I tell them, like, oh, you use Spotify? Awesome. Like, tap that Chromecast button. Boom, it's going to be, you know, coming through all of this. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like, um, I was at um, Savannah's, like, aunt's place for Thanksgiving dinner, right? And they have uh, several Sonos speakers with... uh, um amazon echo built in right Mm -hmm. and and like they were playing some stuff upstairs but like i was going downstairs with a group of people and i was like oh i want to play some stuff on the speaker down here and i asked her uncle like how do you do that like how how can i interface with that and he was like uh tell me what you want to play and i'll play it for you and i was like what if i want to change it you know like 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 i wanted to have complete control yeah you can't have it yeah apparently not i've been fairly silent here Mm -hmm. because i have my Chromecast audio in a box on my shelf because I don't listen to things. Yeah, and that's, that's it's been there for like a whole two years. It's silly to me to listen to things in my house. That's just it's just crazy. Yeah, why who, would you do that? What what kind of podcast listener would ever want to listen to podcasts? I have a phone on, for that. Sure, but like you know, you're in a kitchen. I have a phone for that. I, <laughs> other people want to be able to like interact with you or something i don't I, does, that doesn't I, make any sense yeah, I, don't know, yeah. <laughs> I do actually so i have to say that it has changed my listening habits a little bit when it comes to podcasts right um i now have a specific like playlist in pocket casts for shows that that i know are good for casting mm-hmm. in my house right like um stuff like and and the criteria that goes into that is like stuff that i don't mind listening to at a slower speed right because like net like it turns out my housemates don't want to hear stuff at 2x like it's pump piped Those over the poor speakers people and i and and also like i pick shows that have more of a broad appeal right like mm-hmm. you know uh a little bit of ask me another from from npr right you know a little bit of like uh the the adventure zone you know which like savannah enjoys listening to as well so mm-hmm. you know like uh, i've kind of handpicked uh different things that i will usually cast as opposed to the stuff that i will usually just listen to over headphones when i'm like you know on the bus by myself for example so so yeah so it, it does it does kind of lend itself to a slightly different listening habit than than what I used to have. Right. We'll just say that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I guess it it there is another thing that like since since there isn't any authentication built into it, right? Anybody who's on the Wi-Fi network can cast anything. Yep. It's not really suitable for situations where you 
if you have people who can't be trusted to make good decisions, right? Um, How amusing. Which is like, again, I'm thinking about children, right? I, I, you know, I would not want to just like hand over control uh, of of all of the casting in all of the house to, you know, a, a, a kid who's like 11 years old, right? Because they're going to get the bright idea of like trolling everybody by casting stuff to different rooms at re- very loud volumes and mm-hmm. you know like um they're gonna be into those obnoxious memes that don't mean <laughs> anything right and yeah yeah pretty much <laughs> so i mean i guess the but the, the takeaway there is like don't let people onto your wi-fi network who you don't want to be accessing your devices anyway so there you go mm-hmm. right pretty much yeah yep yep and you know as long as you have a bunch of reasonable adults then it's not a problem Hopefully. Yeah. I haven't had any problems. I've been to several parties where there's like Chromecasts, like, you know, playing stuff. And I'm like, oh, I could play. Nah, I'm, I'll just let, you know. Yeah. Because I'm a reasonable adult. I think most people don't mess with it because they have no clue what to do. That's that's too. Um, oh, one thing that I forgot to mention is that there there is an optional setting. Uh, and I believe that it's on by default where if you are casting to a Chromecast audio, then all of the Android devices that are on the Wi-Fi network will have like this persistent notification that says like, hey, there's a device that's casting on your Wi-Fi network. And then it has like a play pause button and like a stop button. And (sighs) I have had several times where like people who are not used to seeing that notification. They hit the X. Well, yeah, we'll go like, I'm not playing anything. Why is my phone playing something? And then they'll, yeah, make it stop. And then I go like, who did this? Who made it stop? <laughs> so that came out, um, I don't know, like six or seven months ago, I think. Mm-hmm. Like it, it wasn't years ago that that notification started to appear. Yeah. And originally it was, you didn't have a choice. Like it would always pop up. Yes. And 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 I didn't, I didn't even know what was causing it at first because it wasn't an option before. Mm-hmm. Eventually they just made it an a opt-out option. Mm-hmm. And it is probably the single worst decision (laughs) any google team has ever made and not thought hmm let's try this first in a real place and i mean i understand monstrous i I understand why they did it because i think that people were complaining that like ah somebody started playing something and then they like left and it's still playing and i don't know how to stop it kind of thing right I, i get that and the 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 answer to that is very easy it's just like okay go into the google home app and like tell it to stop casting right right that is the answer yeah but like i don't know people didn't understand that so, and so, they so maybe maybe made this um, persistent notification maybe it could be better in oreo because oreo has like different levels of mm. notification priority mm-hmm. so they could make it like you won't see it as a notification unless you open the shade mm-hmm. and then it'll be there at the bottom just right. like, hey, you want to do this thing? Right, right. And you can just ignore it otherwise. Mm-hmm. But and Google will never do that so because it's a good idea. Yeah. I, let's see. The, so that notification, actually, where does that come from? Is that a Google Play notification? Like Google Play services? It must be. It must be. Yeah, because I, I, like, it's definitely not something that's built into the Android open source project. It's cer- <laughs> certainly not built. It's not from Home App. No, because no, because you get it even if you don't have the home app installed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it must be Google Play services, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which also means it must also not show up on iOS. Correct. Does any yeah. of that work on iOS? No. Like any of those notifications? Which notification? The only notification that you should see on iOS is that you played something. Yes, except that that's not a notification. It shows up in the control panel, control center, control center. Yeah, that. Yeah. Okay, that's reasonable. Yeah. And that's the other thing about like using a Chromecast audio on Android versus iOS is like technically it is cross platform, but your your experience is going to be a little bit better if you're on Android, right? Because mm-hmm. like if you're on Android, you'll be able to use the uh, system volume buttons, the hardware volume buttons, right, to control the volume of the Chromecast audio by default, even when, like, your screen is off when you're in a different app and everything. Um, sometimes that gets a little bit screwed up if, like, you All know, the time. I I feel like I've had a better experience with it than you have, but, like, yeah. it, it gets Another half-baked feature from Google. It gets un, unsynchronized a little, kind it's of sig- fairly often. It's significantly not clear which <laughs> device you're controlling at any given time. <laughs> Yeah, but but at least at least it's always in that list of you know when you pop down like the volume the different you know media 
mm-hmm. alarms, uh, um, notifications, right? As long as there's Chromecast something going on, cr- the Chromecast volume slider will always be there. Right. Um, it just might not be the main, the, the one that happens when you click the hardware buttons first. Yeah, but then, but then on iOS, like, you'll never be able to use those. Right. So... I believe that the Chromecast audio is is honestly like the best thing in its class, right? It's definitely better than like trying to use Bluetooth speakers mm-hmm. to fill a room with with, you know, either podcast or music or whatever you're doing. I think that it's a a, lo- a much better solution than any of the other like kind of connected smart speaker things, you know, that we that we've had. I think that it beats Sonos out pretty clearly mm-hmm. because of its price oh, and yeah. you just attach your own speakers. Yep. So you can get better speakers for lower cost, mm-hmm. and you can just get this thirty-five dollar thing and just attach it, and it's no big deal. Yeah, and it's easier for guests to use because mm-hmm. um, with the Sonos, I mean, I've never actually used the Sonos, but from what I understand, you have to like install the Sonos app in order to interface with it or something. something. Like that. Yeah, and then like Apple doesn't even have a a, a audio only thing, but like they will yeah. one day, someday, maybe we'll see. Yeah, yeah. Chromecast audio. I highly recommend it. Um, especially, especially if you already have like speakers that can be plugged into an external source, right? If you, if you have a setup in your home, like my parents, they have uh, a boom box in their kitchen, right? Mm-hmm. Um, which can't interface with any other devices. All it can do is like play some tapes or play CDs or play stuff from the radio. Um, you can't actually plug that into anything else so my parents would have to go and get an entirely new speaker system to complement you know chromecast audio if they were to do that kind of thing right to be fair my parents would also have to get better internet in order to be able to use a chromecast (laughs) audio effectively so you know there's that too but (laughs) there you go but that's that's an assumption that i kind of uh make in this day and age is uh you, you you have to have a certain level of of internet connectivity in order to make your life worth it um pretty much yeah to make your life worth it. Those are strong oh, words. Yeah, that was the huh? bad wording. <laughs> I value you as a human being, but I don't understand how you get your the stuff that you want out of life. How's that? <laughs> oh my gosh, it's still strong. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, well, where can we find you on the internet? Uh, you can find me on Twitter as Ian R. Buck or on my website, ianrbuck.com, where you'll find links to other stuff that I make in addition to all these podcasts. How about you, Ryan? Well, you can find me just about everywhere, but especially on the Twitter at Ryan Amar and, of course, on my website, ryanrampersad.com. And uh, this is Second Opinion, the reviews show here on the Nexus. If you have any feedback for us about this episode or if you have any suggestions for other things that we can review, um, maybe you've bought something that you would like to come on as a guest and and review for us, we would love to talk to you. You can uh, get in touch with us on Twitter as The Nexus TV or you can send us an email at thenexustv at gmail.com. If you would like to use any part of this review, feel free to because it is released under a Creative Commons attribution license. Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a good one.